Cervical disc replacement has become an incredibly popular and attractive solution for people with cervical radiculopathy. In this video, we're going to talk about when we consider a fusion versus disc replacement for symptoms of cervical spondylosis. One of the really powerful features of cervical disc replacement is that it preserves motion in the cervical spine. And if you've seen any of my prior videos on cervical anatomy uh, or spondylosis, you know that you have seven levels in your cervical spine and preserving them is really a priority. So disc replacements allow you to take out a disc and to take the pressure off the nerve and at the same time preserve motion at that level. So it seems like a very attractive way of solving the problem. A fusion, conversely, you can take out the disc, you can take the pressure off the nerves, but you stop that level from moving. And so on the surface, it seems like a disc replacement is significantly better than a fusion. Uh, and it may be in many ways. We're gonna discuss that a little bit further. If we drill into it, cervical disc replacement and fusion are both options for people with cervical radiculopathy. So it's important to say that its behavior, uh, that is the, the behavior of a disc replacement versus a fusion for neck pain, not really well understood as I've said in other videos. For myelopathy, it's not something I use a lot. And I will tell you that different surgeons will have different kind of criteria for when to do a disc replacement, but because the original studies did not include myelopathy as an indication for surgery, I tend not to do a disc replacement when people have cervical myelopathy. So we're really talking about a population of people with cervical radiculopathy, and that is pain that travels down the arm. I think disc replacements are excellent when people have soft disc herniations with cervical radiculopathy that doesn't respond to non-surgical treatment. To be honest, if I had to pick between a disc replacement and getting better with just injections and physical therapy, I'd probably take getting better with physical therapy and injections. But if people don't get better with that and they have a soft disc herniation, I think a disc replacement's incredibly powerful. I don't love them when people have a lot of bone spurs because taking down those bone spurs is part of the treatment for their nerve root compression. And when you take them down and then put a disc replacement into the same space, there's some risk of bone forming in that same space again, kind of reforming or regrowing like it did the first time. That is a condition called heterotopic ossification. And that is something that I don't really love seeing. So in my rule book, when I'm thinking about when to do a disc replacement versus a fusion, if I have to take down a lot of bone spurs, I typically will do a fusion, I won't do a disc replacement. Also, if people have instability, which means one bone is kind of slipping on top of the other, then I don't consider a disc replacement in that situation because the devices that we use for a disc replacement are not really well studied when there's instability at a level. So in those situations where the spine is unstable, I tend to recommend a fusion as well. Outside of that, I think that the option for disc replacement versus fusion really carries some significant downstream consequences but they're both very effective in the short run. The biggest downstream consequence to talk about when you're comparing a disc replacement versus a fusion is that when you preserve motion at a level, as you would with the disc replacement device, you're really not increasing the stress or increasing it significantly at other levels. When you do a fusion, you're stopping that level from moving. And if you stop it from moving, automatically, every time you move your neck forward and back or to the side or something, it's not moving at that level that you fused, so you're kind of increasing the stress on other levels, or what's called adjacent segment degeneration. You're kind of prompting stress at the adjacent segment. So you increase the risk of having a problem at another level when you do a fusion, and you increase the risk of needing another fusion when you have a fusion. So to the extent possible, it's always advisable. If, if you have a choice between a disc replacement and a fusion, if both of them are options, I strongly prefer a disc replacement. But if you have one of the criteria that really don't allow you to do a, de a disc replacement, like you know the bone spurs or instability, or if you have myelopathy, then I still kind of favor the more traditional approach of a fusion. I hope that's helped answer how we think about disc replacement versus fusion. If you have any questions about that topic, please leave them in the comment section below. If there's other questions or comments that you have, I'd welcome those as well. If there's things that you'd like me to answer in these video series, I'd be happy to address them. If you find this content valuable, please click like and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in other videos coming soon.